Yeah, that's a great example. And I think a lot of people approach their rental properties without a plan. Absolutely. Like I, I put out this question on Facebook the other day. Yeah. I said, you know, do you have a business plan for your rental properties? Yeah. And I got some responses like, make money. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or, or you know, just some thing, general I, things I like know. that, which, yeah. yeah, of course, that's that's worked for this guy that, that mentioned that, you know? He's done it for years and yep. he just he just makes money at it. But yeah. But if you want to be, you know, efficient, if you want to be successful beyond that, yeah, I think you have to write it down and and have a plan. No, I totally agree. So, um, yeah. what what types of things, even though you haven't written it specifically for a rental property, what types of things could you put in to a business plan for your rental property? Well, I think I think I think a plan is super important. Okay. And just because I have, don't have a, a daily plan, we do we do have a lot of systems in place, right? And we do have uh, a goal sheet, right? So my goal is 300 units, right? And uh, I have taken a piece of paper and I've actually written it out like, okay, how, what does that mean? How many units do I need to buy a year to get to that by 55? Okay, I'm 42 right now. You know, I need to... I want to. I want to have that by fifty-five. Okay, and I think a lot of times people don't write the plan down because they don't like. I don't, I don't want to set set myself up for failure. I don't want to like, guess too high or too low or whatever. My thing is just write it down, and then if it's if it changes, change it. You know what I mean? It doesn't. It doesn't. It's not set in stone, right? So definitely, I think that's a good thing. Uh, that's one thing I do. The other thing is I would systematize everything you possibly can. Okay, so before two thousand and eight, I would say. I really kind of, I didn't have that many units, okay? So, like, maybe I had 10 units. I don't I don't even know. So, I had, but so it's like you just kind of just do it. And you just kind of, you know, you kind of get through it, right? Um, when you get more units, you realize it's like a lot of the turns are the same, right? And I learned this by going to the Minnesota Multi-Housing Association. And actually, one of your former guests was Kurt Flugel, who really taught me all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I was up there front row writing all this down because he's Mr. Systematization, right? And um, and really, like every single time now, every single time a turn happens or somebody gives us their 60-day notice, we create a list. We created just a checklist online on a, on a website called Asana. It's totally free to use. It's A-S-A-N-A uh, dot com. And uh, we create this online checklist. And it says, uh, okay, 60-day uh, notice. Then it says... Uh, place the ad on Zillow. Uh, number two is, I mean, there's probably a hundred things on there. Uh, place the ad on Zillow. Uh, tell the tenant when they owe rent through. Because sometimes we get a 30-day notice and we're like, sorry, your lease states 60-day notice or now it states two months actually because there's we, did, we didn't want to have any confusion on the days, right? We're not renting you an apartment per day. We're renting it to you per month. So it's two-month notice. Um, so let them know what they owe the rent through. Schedule a preliminary walkthrough, you know, walk through the property and just take a peek at it and just tell them, hey, this and this and this need to get fixed, you know. And if 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 we're going to move, if they're going to move out on, you know, July 1st, maybe we want new carpet, you know. Well, don't wait till July 1st to order the carpet. Order it now, you know what I mean? Or a new refrigerator, maybe they broke or, you know, you just don't know, right? So then you create this entire checklist. And then, and then you have another checklist that says, um, after the tenant is approved, you know, make sure you have these five things signed, you know, um, and then, uh, move out day. Okay. Move out day has got 10 things to do, you know, rekey the lock and, uh, get the move out checklist and get the move out checklist signed and do all this stuff, you know, anyway. So if you have this system, then it's the same every time. Like, why am I remember trying to remember this? Want to hear more on this topic? Click the link below for the full episode of Maximizing Your Property Value.